how to start social media marketing as a solo mm. entrepreneur. As we're having a lot more conversations with these small business people, some mm. of them are solo entrepreneurs and they're just struggling with marketing period. Yeah. And then social media marketing. I know you've told the story, I believe on our podcast before, but if not, if you could tell that story of when you were starting doing social media. Yeah. So, I mean, before, before I hired it out, it was a very frustrating endeavor because I'd wake up and, and as a business owner, you know, you need to be on social media. You see other people doing it. You see people like Gary Vee doing it so well, so just with excellence. And, you know, you got to remember, he's got lots of people working for him <laughs> to make that happen, but you can do very similar things, even as a solopreneur. And so it comes down to practically, okay, back to my story was I'd wake up every day thinking, what am I going to post today? I would try to think of something. I'd look in a book to get a quote, or I'd look at my photo reel to find a cute picture of Callan because at the time he was a lot smaller. Um, I think I started my doing, doing this more like every day when he was about 18 months old and now he's five. Um, but I'd wake up wondering, what am I going to post today? I'd decide something. Then I'd have to go to Canva. If it wasn't just a, a picture, I have to go to Canva, make it look nice. And Canva is great. And it does amazing. It makes, it makes anybody a graphic designer, but it was still a, <laughs> a frustrating process of making it look pretty, the right colors and the right fonts. And I'm just not a graphic designer. So I would literally spend sometimes an hour on that mm. whole process to do one post which is a horrible use of your time. <laughs> if you know how much your time is worth, then it's, it, you want to cry because I, I just spent how much money on that one post. Um, and, and you're not even sure because it doesn't even necessarily, it's hard to look, I can't look at one post and see, did that bring me any money? Like, cause it's, if it's a more, if it's something about, you know, me as a family going out on a picnic on, during the afternoon, I can't pinpoint that to, oh, I made so many sales from that post. It doesn't do that. It doesn't work that way. And so you start to wonder, is it, is my time even worth doing this? Do I need to be doing this? Answer is yes, but it probably does not need to be you. Or if it is you, you need to have a streamlined process that makes it simple and quick. So if I had to start over again and do this all by myself, I would batch content. I would spend a couple of hours even if it was four hour, even if it was a large part of the day, my working day, putting together the social media for the whole month. And I would start small. I would, I would look at just three posts a week, um, five at the most as far as just to take the pressure off that I have to have something out every day. Now I do now, but that's because I hire people to do it for me, but I would think of three days a week. What are three posts a week that I can do? If I have a podcast or a blog, I would simply pull from that. I would take that content, that pillar content that we talk about and break up a podcast, do some very simple editing or go into a blog post that I have that I want to use as the theme for that week and pull out quotes. Maybe if it's a longer article, you can even pull out the whole month worth of stuff. I'd get quotes. I'd find, um, uh, I'd go through a book that I have been reading and find quotes that I like and create posts out of that and do three a week. So if you do a whole month, you're looking at about 12 posts that you need to have. Um, and then go ahead and schedule it so it's done. And so you know, okay, my social media is pretty much done for the month. But then I would think about those extra days. So if I'm doing Monday, Wednesday, and Friday are scheduled, then Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, I wouldn't put pressure on myself to do this. But um, at I would, if I'm hanging there. out somewhere, I'm at the park with Callan and I thought, oh, you know what, you know, how many guys would love to be at the park with their son at 10 o'clock in the morning? So I'd, I'd post a picture on Instagram and him playing on the monkey bars or something and just say, hey, what, what? So I'm so thankful to be able to be at the park on a Tuesday at 10 a.m. with my little buddy, you know, things like that, that simple, quick picture and a quick caption and you're done. And that's Tuesday. Do the same thing on Thursday if, the, if it works out. And then the same thing on Saturday. And that really would be my strategy. I'd keep it super simple, scale it down. And of course, when I'm in a promotion, I'm promoting something, you know, the week's post might be more about that. And I'd have a stronger call to action on some of these. Um, to try to point them to a resource or to a promotion I'm doing, but that's really what I would do. I'd, I'd make it simple for myself. I wouldn't stress out about it. Um, I'd focus on one platform. Now that doesn't mean you can't repurpose, especially Facebook makes it easy to go on Instagram at the same time. 
to make one post and then it goes on both places. But that's what I would do if I was starting over. Yeah, I guess as a, it's a little interesting to do a social or a solo entrepreneur. I think both me and you are not huge fans of social media. And I think if you fall into that camp, doing this by yourself is going to be like pulling teeth. It's, it is extremely time consuming, especially in the beginning. But I think Ryan talked about it, having a Canva account because it's free and there's a lot of templates in there, having an Adobe Express, which is almost the same thing as Canva, it's just on the Adobe side. It, those things make it a lot quicker to do. And you can be a graphic designer without being a graphic designer because those templates in there are extremely easy to use. I'm not a graphic designer at all. And making even these slides was like, just point click, type some stuff. It was like no time to do that. So right. I'm glad that stuff exists. Otherwise, like I'd never be doing any post. I don't do it now <laughs> anyway, but I would have no chance of doing it. But I think because it is time consuming, you again, just going back to my tips, you, you, I highly suggest spend more time finding your audience, really create a goal. And the goal can just be consistency. Like Ryan said, batch that stuff, do three posts a week. Then on certain days that you're actually doing an activity, capture those moments and send them out. Set mm -hmm. the goal of consistent to start, I think is the best thing to do. If you have consistency under your belt, then just try to hit some type of analytic that you're getting so many shares, you're getting so many likes, create posts that are polls, try to get interaction building a strategy around that, batching, doing content in a way that helps you get to your goals and then really dig into the analytics to see what's working, what's not working. Making those data-driven decisions, I think is a great way to increase your efficiency in the time that you're setting aside for that stuff. And I highly suggest like really prioritizing one platform. If you wanna start shotgunning a lot of platforms to see like where your audience is at because you don't know when you're testing, mm -hmm. wherever you're getting the most interaction, just pick that one and stick with it. I know in today's age where it feels like you need to be on every platform doing everything, I don't think that's real, especially if you're a solo entrepreneur. Like it, you're going to spend all your time there and not work on or in your business doing the actual things. Me and Ryan talk about this in the business, outside the business. The outside the business, I think, is marketing, trying to bring people in. Inside the business, you're actually helping your customers. If you're spending all yeah. your time on social media, you're not really helping your customers. And I feel like that's the more important right. part of your business. Yep, for sure. So are you a small business owner feeling overworked, overwhelmed when it comes to social media marketing? If you found this video helpful, we would love to come alongside you and help you become an unfrazzled entrepreneur. Click the link below or just go to wingmanvas.com and check out how we can help you get your time back.